Get Warrior Tough. Mental Training 101 with Andrew Whitman and Dutch Coleman on 105.5 The Roar. And now back to Andrew and Dutch. It's time to get Warrior Tough. With the Dutch Coleman. And of course me, Andrew. It's all good. Dutch, I'm having fun, dude. I, you know, I, I, I love hearing what you think. I really, I, I always want to know what you think. That's why I'm like, I'm the one Twitter feed that I never miss is yours. I have yours that gives me notifications. You know, I want to see what it is that you think. And then, but I did see that you and my wife were kind of tweeting back and forth. You Redskin fans, you. <laughs> I got a, <laughs> 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 all right. So I, I, now I, I'm, I, I'm not going to bring in the Redskins, except that you and my wife connect there with the fanhood. However. That does bring me up to my next thing, which is entire organizations <laughs> that are dysfunctional. Ugh. Now, you're not on the hot seat anymore. The Redskins are their kind of, their yesterday's story. Today's story is the Indianapolis Colts. Mm-hmm. What is going on in Indy, my friend? <sighs> and, and you say going on because it's going on. It's it's not over. They fired Pep Hamilton, uh, and, and, and it's it's – uh, it is just carnage. I mean, there's a bunch of different things going on over there now, but the biggest, the biggest one was the firing of Pep Hamilton, the offensive coordinator for the Colts, and and we know Andrew Luck has been struggling, and you know that's not news to anyone. But but the why? Why is Andrew Luck struggling? That's been the big conversation. So, is it injury? You know, because we know a guy can't be a guy that good can't be playing that poorly. You know, that's what we tell ourselves. You know. It, it can't be that he's playing poorly, right? I mean, we, we know there has to be something wrong. If Tom Brady has a bad game, then, I mean, did his dog die that week or so? Something must have happened. He's perfect. He's We're on to Cincinnati. Yeah, he's too big. To We're on to Cincinnati. Don't you ever bring that up again, Dutch. I know, right? <laughs> but, you, but, but, you know, we, we can't be honest with ourselves and, and take an honest assessment and say, you know what, he's playing poorly right now. And, and it's like we have to find these reasons, these scapegoats, and no one wants to look in the mirror at the guy who's mm. throwing the passes because he is great. He he can't be the problem, and I think that's the biggest problem. Wow. Yeah. I, I just, my take on it is that the entire organization has the yips. It's not physical skill. I, they all are talented. They all are skilled. So it's not that. we are. I mean, you don't just go from being great, 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 great. Oh, never mind. You're the worst right now. In the, no. Okay, so it's the, it's a, an organizational case of the yips. And why would I, – I, I get Pep Hamilton. He's the scapegoat. But that's the he's the guy that's the Andrew Luck whisperer, man. He's the yeah. guy from – like, why would you get rid of the one guy that could probably get him back into the game? But you, but you know what poor leadership is and, and – because it starts at the top, and I'm going to take some shots at Jim Irsay, and it may be a little unfair. Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> but he's had the, he's had the drug and alcohol issues. He's had the domestic stuff that's been going on. He's had all the different things that people have speculated it's it's uh, affecting the organization. I think his daughter had to come in and take over to do some things. And didn't he get he suspended, suspended too? Like he was suspended, he, right? Yeah. yeah, by the league, and and so he has all these issues going on. Then he makes the statements about about having to. Um, uh, what did he say about uh, – what, what was it? He said something about the failures with Peyton Manning and how they were going to win, you know, two or three Super Bowls with – Oh, yeah, with, because because uh, it was Manning's fault. Yeah, yeah. All that nonsense. Come on, it's man. A, it's pressure on the system. So they go out and they make a bunch of poor decisions in the offseason, uh, you know, signing a, older players, spending a bunch of money. Not oh, wait. That does, sound like the, that does sound like the Redskins. Okay, never mind. Exactly, You're right. Yeah. Exactly. That's messed up. But so, so they begin to make all these decisions. Now, all these decisions are occurring before you reach, before you reach uh, Andrew Luck. You're you know? right. So now you're placing parts around him that are, that are not necessarily ideal, right? So then you come into the season. And this is the other part of poor leadership that bothers me. You don't do that assessment. You don't do that inner office assessment of, of your parts. Number one, no one's been paying attention to the fact that Andrew Luck has been regressing over the last four years. Not just this season. So if you're doing that, that, that continuous improvement of your parts and of your organization, you're going to notice that. Someone's going to point to that and say, hey, what do we need to get for Andrew Luck? Does he need this? Does he need that? Does he need extra coaching? Does he need more time in the film room? What do we need to do? Because he's been regressing. So that's prior to this season. So this is the fourth year in a row he's regressing, right? So you don't have that, you don't have that in place. The other thing that you, you have is, is the enabling because you don't want to blame him. You don't want to talk to him about his 
fault. You want to blame everyone around him. So that's not helping Andrew Luck. He's a he's an accomplished individual. He can take it. Right. You need to get the course correction. You got to exactly. give him the course correction, man. And sometimes we get to the point where we where we feel like we can't criticize the star. Like he's the star. We don't want to. You know, we don't want to hurt his feelings, and we don't want to rock the boat. Yeah, no. I don't think that's criticism. I mean, it's course corrections, right? We're not trying to tear you down. Hey, man, an honest assessment is an honest assessment. Here's where we're at. This is what we need to do to correct. And that's what I think. Is it Pep Hamilton? He was afraid to do that, and that's why they're getting rid of him. Is it Pagano? Are they afraid? I mean, is Pagano trying to keep his job? Is it? Uh, I, I hate to say Jimbo Fisher syndrome, but that's why Jimbo let that stuff going on with Jameis Winston because he was on the hot seat. He's about to lose his job. He got to win. So is that what's going on? Is that what gives us the yips all the way down from the top? Well, it's worse because in college, the top is Jimbo Fisher. Oh, so if you, yeah. if you relate that to NFL, you have the owner who's basically putting the quarterback on a pedestal higher than the coaches and the GMs and all that stuff. Because you're saying basically everything is about him. We'll go back to the Redskins. RG3, yeah. Daniel Snyder comes out and makes these statements about RG3 that seems like he's supporting RG3 more than he's supporting the people in between him and RG3 right. that work for him. And that's so why now, Shanahan is on the, you know, on the first bus out of town after that, right? So undermining the leadership because you've enabled the player. The player can come straight to you and do stuff. He's hanging out at your house. He's doing stuff. So now you have that with Andrew Luck and Jim Irsay. And the coach is in the middle going, hey, man, what about me? I'm, I'm in charge. You're, see, I, I need to be able to counsel this guy. I need to be able to get on this guy. But when you told this guy it's all about him, you've taken me out of the equation. You've stripped me of my power. And, and I think that's what's happening. Now everyone's scared sit, to sit Andrew Luck down and say, hey, man, what's your problem? What's going on? Is this a trend, Dutch, across the NFL with these owners that are doing that? Is this a trend? I mean, Jerry Jones, you know, Daniel Snyder, Jim Ursay, that guy up there in the Browns. I, I mean, I don't, you know, what's going on in San Francisco, right? We run Harbaugh out because he's not, you know, not playing the ball the way we want to. But I don't know. Is this a trend that the owners, these toy, like NFL team is like your new toy, a new sports car, and so we just drive it however we want? I don't absolutely, know. Absolutely. Absolutely. We hire these great people and we tell them how to do their job. You know, you they were telling Jim Harbaugh what he needs to do. They were telling Pep Hamilton he needs to sp speed up the offense, right? Well, what need, what need, there's nothing wrong with the offense. If Andrew Luck drops back and there's open receivers running around, that means the offense is fine. The execution by Andrew Luck is the problem. He's throwing to bad, he's uh, throwing to cover receivers, or he's throwing bad passes to open receivers. When he played uh, on Monday night, he had a quarter where he was darn near perfect. He brought him down from 17 points. So that means that he's he, he's capable of doing that. Right. He was making the right decisions in those moments. And people saying, well, if you play fast, that's why he did that. That's not realistic. He, and, and so it's not just about him playing fast. Right. It was about the fact that the, the Panthers decided to play a certain defense that we know the prevent defense that allows you to get a bunch of numbers and even come back and gain some space, gain, gain, make some gains. Right. But it's not realistic because you don't start the game like that because the Panthers aren't going to be in a prevent defense. Right, and so and then back to my margin of error. They could go to that because, right, they they had dominated, and and they had the margin of error so they could go to prevent. Absolutely. So when and I'll go back to the Notre Dame Clemson game. Oh man, get out of my head, dude. There's only room in here for me. Exactly. I was going Notre, right there. Notre Dame starts coming back, and people are like, "Oh man, Notre Dame, you know." Notre Dame's good. They showed what they're capable of doing. Yeah, they showed what they were capable of doing after Clemson shut it down. Yeah. If, if that's not a, a moment where Clemson hadn't decided to go conservative and protect the lead, they're up 30 or 35 points because they're still, you know, they're, their foot is on your throat and they're trying right. to suck the life out of you, stamp the life out of you. So, you know, when people say speed up the coach offense, it's funny how they always play better when they're down by a lot because the other team – has something to do with that. They take their foot off the gas and they begin to protect the lead. They stop playing football. And that's why your team looks better. And that's why it's, it's this theory of we speeding up the offense and we do better. No. No, that's an illusion. You're in mm. fantasy land. It's not right. it's happening. That Yeah, that dude, that's so insightful. that people, We always forget about what's the, the strategy of the other team. The other team is playing more conservative because they have a margin of error. We never remember that, right? It's a it, full-fledged zone. We drop everybody back, and we try to keep everything in front of And now of you got these big windows to throw the passes to instead of these little tiny tight ones. And Yeah. Absolutely. That's so it's funny brilliant. that Luck does so much better when they're down 20 points. Yeah. Oh, so we should speed. We should play like that the whole game. Yeah. Yeah, but down point, 20 points. Teams that play like they're up 20. From All the, the time. Yeah. Then we're good. <laughs> right.
<laughs> oh man, that's that's amazing. All right, what's going on with Kaepernick and San Fran, man? He got benched. I heard. I, you know, initially I thought. I mean, these, these, you know, first of all, they can't handle a strong personality like Harbaugh. How much? How how important is it for you to win? The ownership needs to understand that when we win, my goals are achieved. I'm here to make money. This is the business. It doesn't matter if I'm right. It matters if you're winning games for me, mm. Harbaugh. They're, again, they're trying to dictate how Harbaugh does things, right? Yeah, and they, for what? For what? Because you want to be in charge because you have to be right. And again, Dutch, you say it so well. It doesn't – being right is a sand trap. It's irrelevant. It, winning is what's relevant. That's the target. The mission. Whatever the mission is, is the target. Not oh, me. So it's not about me. And, and when, the, when the ownership – in the in the uh, the executive leadership, the GM and all that started trying to make it about them and how they do it. I'm like, man, I got this coach here that's flipped this this poor organization around into a championship kind of organization. Hey, man, what do you need? What do you want? How can I help you? Because you are completing the mission that I set forth. The mission has nothing to do with me being happy. It has to do with the team winning championships or being in that realm. And and since you're taking us there, what do you need, buddy? So they they got away from that clash with the coaches uh the culture just shifted you got players uh getting in trouble you got players prematurely uh, retiring you got systems falling apart because the guy who who designed the system is gone and and so now when the season starts and they're playing poorly you start pointing at players like oh man that guy's not playing well that guy's not playing well yeah the whole structure fell apart in the offseason before this did you expect anyone to be doing well it's almost like these guys they they spice the gumbo, then uh, blame us because it's hot, or blame <laughs> the players because you spice the gumbo and now you're blaming you because it's hot, dude. You you poured the hot sauce in it, dude. Right? I mean, that's almost I don't know, man. It's just this delusional thinking, this lack of emotional intelligence, this lack of critical thinking. It's not just in sports. Sports is the backdrop. That's why we talk about it. And if you're listening to the show, you know you're probably seeing this almost every day in corporate America. I know I do. I know I do every day. And if you're tired of it, man, take control of it. Call the office, 864-977-1443. Come to our CEO of You seminar on Friday, November 20th. It's in uh, Greenville at the Hilton Garden Inn. All the details will be um, up on the website or um, call the office, and we'll get the invitation, the email out to you. Um, it's, I think we have room for uh, – it's a limited. It's like, wait, I think we have room for 32 people or whatever. This is going to be life-changing. If you're tired of this kind of stuff and you want to take the bull by the horns – Get your target dialed in, become a high performer, dominate instead of you know waiting on the refs. Go ahead, Dutch. Do us a favor, spread the word. If you if you're an individual, we would love to have you there. If you have access to other individuals that you think could do this, you have a friend that's complaining about his work life, that's complaining about his life, or you may say, hey man, you need to go see Andrew Whitman. You need to do this. So don't be afraid to spread the word because again, it's not all about us. It's about our community. It's about our environment. So you may have negative people around you. That's screwing up your day. <laughs> right. Send them to come see us. <laughs> yeah, we'll take care of it, man. HR we- professionals, if you have friends of HR professionals, pass the information on. Make them aware of what's going on because it's going to make their jobs easier. Right. Uh, we would love um, for any any help that you guys can give us. It'll be fantastic. Dutch, the hour's gone. We have got to go. I'll see you next week, buddy. Yes, sir. Good All stuff. Right.